Hello world, this is Brian, aka Invisible Doogie, and I am back, yes I'm back, for another tutorial on Project Spark. In this one, I'm going to try and tackle the basics of code as fast as I can to get you guys a basic understanding of how to use code to do certain things in Project Spark. And code is really the uh, essence of how you build everything, how you build games in, inside of Project Spark, how you build experiences. And so I have this character right here. Uh, I can go ahead and go into his brain, and it's blank. So before I actually start making stuff, let's talk about objects and brains and code and pages and all that stuff. The way I like to think of it is a character in a world, uh, think of each character as a bookshelf. The brain that you place inside of it is a book. And within that book, you have multiple, let's go ahead and insert a few pages here. You've got multiple pages inside that book. Now, the reason I call this object a bookshelf is because you can also technically have multiple books running. Yes, you can have multiple brains running inside that bookshelf. So we can go, get, go ahead and do this. So let's say once I'm going to add a brain jump. I'm going to add another brain here called move. I'm going to add another brain here called uh, attack. And uh, just like that, I have kind of three brains or three quote unquote books running in my character now. But you know, that's something that's for more advanced users, something that you don't really need to worry about. Uh, for most people, putting just simply uh, all of the code running inside their brain is, is enough. I just wanted to give that an, as an example for when you, get, you, when you get up there, get experienced enough to really start putting multiple books inside the bookshelf. But let's start with the one book inside the bookshelf. So we go into the brain again, it's completely blank. And we have this win side and this do side. So the important thing about how Project Spark runs and how code runs in general is when you're giving instructions to something, and really you're building an instruction book, you want to tell it to do certain things. So what do you want to do? What do you want your character to do in your world? What do you want every object to be able to do in your world? That's the kind of basic thing you have to answer with code. So the very first thing I want my character to do is I want him to be able to just move in my world. So we're going to just say do move. We're going to go ahead and go to test. And now he moves. Yes, he does technically move. He moves forward and he just continues to move. Nothing that I'm doing is actually uh, impacting that. He's just moving. And that's where the win side comes into place. Win is kind of setting parameters on I want to do this thing, but I only want to do it at certain points. So for move, because I want myself to be able to move this character, I want to say when I am using the left stick, I'm going to be moving. So what that means is that's assigning move to my left stick. So now I'll go back to the test. And I'm using the left stick. And you see my character is now moving around based on my left stick. So I've given kind of a win parameter. And because of that, I've started kind of taking control and telling my character to move in the way I want them to move. Uh, similarly, I want my character to jump. Uh, I want them to jump when I press A. So let's just say when A is pressed, do jump. Oh, no, that's turn. Uh, it's turn again. Nah, there we go. Jump. All right. When A is pressed, do jump. Go to test. I hit A, and look at that. Look at that. I'm jumping. Great jumping, Scott. Okay. Uh, and now, you know, most games have some sort of basic attack. So let's just put the basicest of basicest of attacks right here. When X is pressed, do attack. Go here. And when I'm pressing X, look at that. I'm punching. I'm punching. Uh, Invisible people, basically. Uh, so I hit A, kind of punching while I'm in the air, uh, punching while I'm on the ground. So now let's start giving extra constraints to my person. I want to only be able to punch when I'm on the ground. I don't want to be able to punch when I'm in the air uh, because that would totally break my game if I was able to punch in the air. So you can actually do that inside of Project Spark. And this is when we start working with what we call child lines and variables. So these are two very important concepts inside of code. Uh, the very first thing is we want to be able to, to tell when I'm jumping, when I'm not jumping, and then when I'm not jumping, I'm able to attack. When I am jumping, I'm not able to attack. So what does that look like? So first, we want to actually kind of set a variable for when I'm attacking or when I'm jumping, then I can or can't attack. So we're going to say when I am in the air, or when I have actually started to be in the air, then we're going to go over to values. And we're going to take a Boolean variable. We're going to call this uh, don't 
attack. And we're going to say don't attack equals true. Now, a Boolean can either be true or false. And it's just basically storing this value that this don't attack thing is equal to true when I'm in the air. When I am no longer in the air, then don't attack is equal to false. So I've now kind of set the parameters for this, this don't attack variable. I add a line here, and then I say when don't attack is equal to false, then I make this x press equals attack a child line under here. And what that actually means is this when x press do attack now will only run when this thing on the when side happens as well. So when don't attack is equal to false, and I press X, now I attack. Before I just had to press X to attack. Now I have to now I have to press X, and I also have to not be in the air. So let's go to test. Let's see, I'm jumping, I'm jumping. I'm pressing X when I'm in the air. Nothing's happening. I get on the ground though, and I can I can punch again. So just like that, I've set extra constraints for my character. The next thing to talk about is sort of ordering of code inside of Project Spark, because that's very important to know. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have my person, when Y is pressed, he's going to explode in a fiery impact. So we're going to play this FX when Y is pressed. Uh, we're going to play the fireball impact, and we are also going to destroy my person. So the other important thing to talk about here is the fact that you can have multiple things running after a certain input happens by having them as child lines. Um, because these will these will all run when Y is pressed now. So when Y is pressed, I play this FX fireball impact and then I destroy myself. What does that look like? Go in here, I press Y, and boom, explosion, I'm gone. Now if I were to change up the order of these lines, put destroy before play FX fire impact, what do you think will happen? Go in here again, I press Y, and I just disappear. I don't actually even play a fireball impact. And that's because code runs sequentially. It runs from line one to two to three to four to five and so on and so forth. And it does all of this every single frame. Your game runs at 30 frames per second. So that means 30 times every single second, your brain is running through every single line on there and activating that. And um, the important thing I've done here is I've destroyed my character before they can actually play this effects. So because I've done that, it's running every line kind of one after the other. The destroy line happens before the play effects line. I do this, the play effects line now first happens, then destroy happens. So I'm able to kind of play my thing before I destroy myself. So it's just important to know if something isn't working, look to see how your lines of code are ordered. The last thing I'm going to show off is what happens um, when code is running every single frame. Uh, because you can run into certain things, the fact that code is running every single frame. So we are going to set another new thing here. After uh, one second, so after a countdown timer of one second, then my character is going to go ahead and equip an apple. So after one second, my character equips an apple. Simple, right? So go to test. And then you see, oh my god, so many apples. He just keeps on equipping apples every single frame. So 30 apples per second are created. He'll just continue to create more and more apples uh, as time goes on. And there's no stopping to this apple. And that's because on the win side, it's just looking for, after one second, do this thing. And it's not telling this thing to ever stop doing itself. So when you're making code, you also have to tell when to stop doing something. Um, so we can really easily kind of clamp that or limit that by saying uh, when started to. And started to basically means as soon as one second has passed, it, this runs one time. We can also just say once. So this one line runs only one time in the entire game. Or we can even set a duration timer. So this thing lasts for one frame. And all three of those will do the same exact thing. All three of those will basically clamp this down, limit this thing down so it only runs that one time. And now I go back and test. And after one second, I've equipped my apple, and I can go around, and it's just the one apple, just the thing I wanted. Perfect. So the last thing I'm going to cover is page switches and what that actually means. So first, let's go ahead and uh, get rid of this. And we're going to add a new line here at the top. I'm going to say uh, when page entered. 
we're going to put uh, two lines underneath of there. Uh, the first of them, we're going to say, when this page has been entered, I'm going to go ahead and equip my apple, just like I was doing before. Uh, but also, um, what I'm going to put up here is I am going to go ahead and destroy my equipment. And uh, again, because code is running sequentially, this is going to destroy any equipment I might be holding, and then I'm going to equip my apple. If I did it the other way around, I'd equip my apple, and then my apple would be destroyed right away. Then I want to add here, when right trigger is pressed, I go ahead and do, let's go to brain, switch page. Let's go over to brain, next page. So I hit right bumper, go over to my next page. And it's totally blank right now. That means I'm switching to this page and nothing's happening on this page. So let's change that. Let's go ahead and copy this. Let's bring this over. And let's say, instead of equipping an apple on this page, he's actually going to go ahead and equip a proper sword. And then I'm also going to go back in. Let's copy this uh, page switch from the first page, bring it over to the second page, copy it there, and just say, when right trigger is pressed, I switch back to my previous page. So now right trigger toggles between switching from one page to the next page. So we go into test, and we see, so my character has his apple equipped, he's running around, he can attack, he can jump, he can move. So then I go ahead and hit right trigger, and I have my sword equipped, uh, but now I'm, I'm holding down on my left stick, I'm pressing A, I'm pressing X, nothing else is actually happening. None of that other stuff that I had going on on page one is happening because I'm now on page two. The one thing that will continue to happen, though, is variables. So that Boolean variable, that will continue to happen because uh, I guess think of variables as sort of the characters, the plot points, the things you're writing inside of this book, and the actual lines of code, these inputs, um, are words. So uh, plot points inside of an actual book that you're reading, they continue on no matter what page you're on because, you know, you have read this one thing and you remember that thing and it continues on. The actual words on the page, though, you have to, you know, if you're the writer, you have to manually write them on the next page. If you're the reader and there's no words on the next page, then you'll be like, well, I remember that great story, but there's actually nothing happening now. There's just a blank page. Uh, so hopefully that kind of analogy helped solve that for you. So uh, that is the basics of sort of the, the basic tenets of code. I hope that gives you enough to slightly understand how code works. And this is just the tip of the surface, there are over 1,400 different code tiles in there, so there's a lot of code to explore between. Uh, you go into any sort of, on the do side or the win side, you have multiple pages of code, and inside of each of those, uh, you know, each of these things, you have kind of multiple pages inside of there too, so there's so much code to explore. Um, too much for any sort of single tutorial to, to cover, it's sort of like, how do you teach the English language, but hopefully this gives you the building blocks to now explore and figure out how to choose code and make code run how you want it to. Um, of course, there's other great YouTubers out there like Mescad, Saris Tackley's, which I'll link to in the descriptions, where they will give you directions for how to use code to do specific things in your game. So uh, let me know in the comment section if there are specific pieces of code that you are having issue with, if there's a thing that you want me to cover in the future, uh, and I will, uh, from time to time, I'll still continue to do these tutorials for you. So that will do it for me this episode. Hopefully it was enlightening enough for you as it was for me. And thanks everyone for watching.